everyone welcome back to GK today i am mujhe sana and in this video we'll cover the current affairs before we move ahead let me inform you that these questions are part of our daily 20 mcq series 2022 in the gk today's android application so if you are looking for the text version of these questions and their explanations along with the interactive quiz you may consider joining our daily 20 mcq series in the gk today android application in this course in app you get daily 20 mcqs a fortnightly quiz a monthly revision document and also category wise revision ebooks that are optimized for reading on mobile you are also able to access all archives of questions from january 2020 onwards and let me tell you one more thing if you want the hindi version of this session you can refer to our former channel named as gk today the link has been given in the description box from where you can reach to so without taking much of your time let's get started good morning everyone welcome back to gk today and today we'll be discussing most important mcqs for 19th of january 2022 starting with very first question which zone received maximum share of complaints under ombudsman schemes as per the recent rbi report so the reserve bank of india witnessed a 22.27% rise in the volume of complaints under various ombudsman schemes during april 2020 to march 2021 do remember that chandigarh kanpur and delhi got the maximum number of complaints and the north zone accounted for the maximum share of complaints that is total 43.1% of the total share in 2020 to 21 and it was followed by the west zone and then south zone do remember that east zone continued to have the least share of complaints so basically atm and debit cards mobile banking and credit cards accounted for the most reasons of complaints okay now earlier we have seen that the national commission for women received almost 31000 complaints of crimes against women and it is a 30% increase from 2020 so half of these complaints were alone from the state of uttar pradesh So the first reason that was witnessed to have these complaints were women's right to live with dignity and the rights accounts for emotional abuse. Then second reason was domestic violence and the third reason was dowry harassment. Okay. Now talking about RBI, recently it has created a new department named as Department of FinTech to promote innovation in the FinTech sector. and also it aims to identify the challenges and opportunities that are related with it so the new fintech department will also provide framework for further research on the subject and will help in policy interventions of rbi now which ministry has recently asked all the states to form and notify a dedicated anti narcotics task force in their respective jurisdictions and the aim is to eradicate drugs from the country so the answer would be ministry of home affairs and the minister of which is amit shah now apart from it mukhya mantri kanya sumangla scheme is implemented by the state of uttar pradesh and the scheme provides conditional cash transfer of a sum of nearly 15000 rupees to a girl child at different stages of her life now you have to tell me which state was the worst performer in the fourth health index of niti ayog please answer me in the comments Question number 2 which country recently launched formal free trade agreement negotiations with India so with an aim of doubling the trade between India and UK by the year 2030 the country has launched formal free trade agreement negotiations so bilateral trade between the countries is worth about 50 billion dollars per year and commerce minister Piyush Goyal said both the countries had agreed to revive the sectors such as agriculture and dairy sectors and as per the world trade organization preferential terms can be given if they have bilateral agreements that cover all the trade okay so talking about uk recently uk government has launched an initiative named as better health smoke free campaign so this highlights the impact of adult smokers on the young people and the campaign has urged the smokers to quit smoking and as per the data released by the campaign 4.9% of teenagers whose parents smoke have also adopted this particular habit 
Also do remember that New Zealand has set goals to go smoke free by the year 2030. Now few days back we have seen that World Anti-Doping Agency that is WADA has published its report on rule violations. So it is very embarrassing to see that India is now among top 3 of world's biggest doping violators. So bodybuilding, weightlifting and athletics have majorly contributed to this record. So worldwide, Russia has topped this list, means it has total 167 violations. Then it was followed by Italy with 157 and then third was India and after that fourth was Brazil and fifth was Iran. Okay, at least you have to remember what is the India's rank and who was the topper. Now do remember that actress Harshali Malhotra she is actually the girl Munni from the movie Bajrangi Bhaijan. She has received the 12th Bharat Ratna Dr. Ambedkar Award of 2022. Now can you tell me who has recently been conferred with Subhas Mukherjee Award? Please answer me in the comments. Question number 3. Which Indian company has joined hands with Africa 50 investment platform to develop Kenya transmission project? So Power Grid Corporation of India Limited has signed a joint development agreement with Africa 50 to continue to develop the Kenya transmission project on a public-private partnership basis. So talking about Africa 50, it is a pan-African infrastructure investment platform and after completion, the project will be the first independent power transmission in Kenya and it would be Africa's first financing of transmission lines on a PPP basis. Now apart from it, Indian solar power producer Azure Power has fully commissioned its largest project which is a 600 megawatt solar park in the state of Rajasthan and it is located in Bikaner and it is connected to the interstate transmission system. So it will supply its power to Solar Energy Corporation of India for over 25 years. Now talking about SECI, it is a central public sector unit which works under Union Ministry of New and Renewable Energy and few days back it has invited for bids to install a 1000 megawatt battery energy storage system and this is in line with Government of India's vision of producing 450 gigawatt renewable energy by the year 2030 and achieve the sustainable development goal. Now do remember that 2-3 months back Germany has launched world's first self-driving that is automated driverless train in its Hamburg city and this is a part of 70 million dollars digital rail Germany modernization plan. Now can you tell me which is the world's first movie to be shot in space? What is the name of that particular movie? Question number 4. Who is the head of the working group set up to strengthen television rating point services? So the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting has asked the Television Monitoring Agency, Broadcast Audience Research Council India to release viewership ratings of new channels with immediate effect. And the Ministry has also set up a working group under the chairmanship of Prasar Bharti CEO Shashi Shekhar Vimpati to study different aspects of capturing data and to strengthen the television rating point services. Now talking about some of the important recent appointments, do remember that Gabriel Boric became the youngest president of Chile. Then V. S. Patania takes over as Director General of Indian Coast Guard. After that, Vinay Kumar Tripathi has been appointed as new chairman and CEO of Railway Board. Then Mr. Baldev Prakash is our new MD and CEO of Jammu Kashmir Bank. Then Mr. Anupam Ray is to become India's new ambassador to United Nations Conference on Disarmament. After that, Vasu Devan PN has been reappointed as MD and CEO of Equitas Small Finance Bank. Then Vijay Raj and Varun Sharma have been chosen for the new brand ambassadors of Ease My Trip. After that, Vikram Misri has been appointed as the Deputy National Security Advisor 
and Radhika Jha is our new CEO of Energy Efficiency Services. Now you have to tell me who has been appointed as the chairman of CACP recently. CACP stands for Commission for Agricultural Cost and Prices. Actually we should say he or she has been reappointed. Please write in the comments. Question number 5. What is the crew capacity of the Gaganyan program? So the Indian Space Research Organization has successfully conducted the qualification test of the cryogenic engine for the Gaganyan program for a duration of 720 seconds. And the test was conducted at ISRO Propulsion Complex Mahindragiri, which lies in Tamil Nadu. So this long duration test is a major milestone for the three crewed human space program Gaganyan. And this engine will undergo four more tests for a cumulative duration of 1810 seconds. So do remember that it contains three people. Now apart from it, the monumental national flag, which is the world's largest national flag made of khadi fabric, conceptualized and prepared by Khadi and Village Industries Commission to celebrate Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa. So this flag is 225 feet long and 150 feet wide. So it was first unveiled at Leh on Gandhi Jayanti and later it was displayed in various historic places to commemorate various historic events. So recently the flag was displayed along the India-Pakistan border at Jaisalmer, Rajasthan which was the center stage of India-Pakistan War 1971. So you can be asked that which institution developed the world's largest monumental national flag answer would be KVIC. Now do remember that Himachal Pradesh has recently defeated Tamil Nadu to clinch their Vijay Hazare trophy title in 2021-22 to edition and it was held at Jaipur. Now apart from it, South Korea's first domestically produced space launch vehicle named as KSLV-2 Nuri rocket failed recently due to a loose helium tank and all the three stages of a rocket worked taking it to a height of 700 kilometers and 1.5 ton payload separated successfully. But the mission failed as the third stage engine stopped burning 46 seconds earlier than the scheduled time. Now can you tell me which country has recently tested the railway borne missile? Please write your answers in the comments. Question number 6. Which is the first country to approve purchase of BrahMos missiles from India? So the Philippines has given a $374 million contract to BrahMos Aerospace to supply the shore-based anti-ship missiles for the country's navy. So the BrahMos Aerospace, which is an Indian-Russian joint venture, produces the supersonic cruise missiles and the BrahMos can be launched from submarine, ship, aircraft or land platforms. So India has already deployed a large number of the BrahMos missiles and other key assets in several strategic locations. Now apart from it, the RDO has successfully flight tested the man-portable anti-tank guided missile. So it has been indigenously developed and it is a third generation fire and forget anti-tank guided missile derived from NAG. And talking about Russia, recently it has developed and unveiled it's TU-160M strategic bomber also known as White Swan. So recently the debut flight of this bomber was conducted successfully. Now Philippines was also in news because last year it has been added in the grey list of financial action task force along with three other countries Haiti, Malta and South Sudan. And do remember that Pakistan is also there in this list. So Pakistan has successfully tested flight the Fateh-1 guided multi-rocket system last year and this has been indigenously developed and it is capable of delivering a conventional warhead for the country. Also Pakistan has successfully test fired the Shaheen-3 missile which is nuclear capable surface to surface ballistic missile. Now talking about Russia, also Russian defense forces have successfully test launched the Sircon hypersonic missile system that can strike both naval and ground targets. Now can you tell me which state has been awarded the first in the third national water awards 
2020. Question number seven: Which institution recently released report on pandemic billionaires? So, as per a recent Oxfam report, twenty people in Asia, from India, China, Hong Kong, and Japan, mostly associated with the field of pharmaceuticals, saw their wealth zoom during the pandemic period. And as per the report, the richest one percent owned. More wealth than the poorest 90% in the region, and the total number of billionaires grew by almost a third, from 803 in March 2020 to 1087 by November 2021. So this was all about the pandemic billionaires report. Now few days back we have talked about the Henle Passport Index, in which India's rank was at 83, and the toppers were Japan and Singapore. This is very important question. Now, apart from it, USA has categorized India as a country of concern on climate in the assessment of American intelligence communities in its report called as National Intelligence Estimate on Climate. So, India is in this list with ten other countries. For example, Afghanistan, Haiti, Colombia, Myanmar, Pakistan, Iraq, North Korea, Honduras, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. Then India has been ranked at 71st in the 10th edition of Global Food Security Index that was published recently. Also, India ranks at 101st in the Global Hunger Index. Question number eight: Which country has built an artificial moon project? So, Chinese scientists have built an artificial moon research facility to simulate low gravity environments using magnetism. And the facility, which is to be officially launched this year, will use powerful magnetic fields inside vacuum chamber to make gravity almost disappear. And this effect is called as diamagnetic levitation. Now, apart from it, the Chinese scientists have developed the world's first machine that can charge people with crime using artificial intelligence. And as per the scientist. The AI prosecutor can charge people with more than ninety-seven percent accuracy, and it works on verbal description. And researchers also announced that it can also identify dissent against the state. Okay. Then two crew members of the Chinese Shenzhou thirteen spaceship have recently entered open space for the second time, and the aim of this spacewalk is to carry out works for the construction of country's own orbital station. Tian Gong. Do remember that current crew includes Wang Yaping. Why she is important? Because she is the first female astronaut to board the Chinese orbital station. Then, apart from it, British consultancy Center for Economics and Business Research has predicted that China will become the world's top economy in dollar terms by the year 2030, and also it predicted that the world's economic output will exceed 100 trillion dollars. For the first time next year, and India is set to regain its place as the world's best, sixth biggest economy after 2023. Now, can you tell me, artificial sun project is related to which country? Question number nine: When is the National Startup Day celebrated? So, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced that 16th of January will be celebrated as National Startup Day every year, and the Prime Minister also said this decade is the Tech Aid of India, and with over sixty-one thousand recognized startups by the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, the government acknowledges India as the world's third largest startup ecosystem. Now, apart from it, the National Gallery of Modern Art celebrated Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav with Kala Kum organizing artist workshop for painting scrolls. That represented the tales of heroes of India's freedom movement. So the scrolls also reflected traditional art genres such as patra chitra, tala patra chitra, manjusha, madhubani paintings, and patua. So the 750 meters long scrolls painted by over 500 artists from across India will be displayed during the Republic Day celebration. So, if you are asked that which institution organized the Kala Kumbh Artist Workshop for painting the tale of India's freedom movement, answer would be National Gallery of Modern Art. Now, coming to last question, 
As per the India State of Forest Report 2021, the country's forest cover increased to dash of India's geographical area. So the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change released the India State of Forest Report 2021 and as per this report, the forest cover has increased to 7,13,789 square kilometers or you can say 21.71% of India's geographical area. So it is an increase of 1,540 square kilometers and Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Odisha, Karnataka and Jharkhand contributed the most to increase in forest cover while the Northeast reported the biggest losses. So correct answer is 21.71%. Now apart from all these things, Jelly Kattu is celebrated in the Indian state of Tamil Nadu as a part of Pongal celebration on Mattu Pongal Day. Do you remember that in the year 2017, Tamil Nadu passed a bipartisan bill with the accession of the Prime Minister that exempts Jalikattu from the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act of 1960. Now one last news, the Defence Ministry has set up an online portal named as Raksha Pension Shikayat Nivaran Portal which aims to resolve the pension related grievances of ex-servicemen and their dependents. So the Ministry also announced that the Ministry has allotted 320 crore rupees to the Armed Forces Flag Day Fund to clear all backlog of pending applications for welfare schemes. And these measures were announced on the occasion of Armed Forces Veteran Day, which is celebrated on 14th of January. Now let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide you can see 5 questions which have been taken from the past 2 3 days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this Meenu Satsana signing off.